start telling you a little tiny story from Junior and Tina. Our very first adoption. The adoptions have to happen on a weekday because the courts are only open on weekdays. But we were gonna have a really, really big party with all the family on a weekend. So, but we still wanted to do something really special on the weekday um, that we adopted Junior and Tina. So we were trying to figure out what can we do to make this day special since we're saving the party for the weekend. And I thought, well, I have some gift cards to Coldstone Creamery. So why don't we on the way home go to Coldstone and get ice cream for everybody? And so that's what we did. So a year later, we were adopting David and Isaac. And it just so happened that during the year, I got more Cold Stone gift cards from I don't know where, but they were in my wallet. And we were planning it. And the same thing was happening. We were going to adopt them during the week and then have the party on the weekend. So we said, well, let's go to Cold Stone again and just make that kind of a tradition. And so that's what we did. We went to Cold Stone again after we adopted David and Isaac. So then a year later, we were adopting Jonathan and you guessed it. We had more Cold Stone gift cards from, again, I don't even remember how I got them. I really don't. But we started this tradition of we have to go to Cold Stone ice cream every time we have an adoption. So when I first got these kids, um, their mom was in jail. Um, I don't want to tell you too much um, personal information. It doesn't matter. We have a very good relationship with her now, and I'm I love it. I'm I I'm happy about it. It's perfect. So I don't want any negative comments about what was going on at the time. But the facts of the matter are that at the time, that's where she was. And my understanding was that she wasn't going to be getting out. First nine months of the case, there was no contact with her other than letters. They had decided that because they could not work reunification from jail, that they needed to change the goal to adoption. So at nine months, we were planning to change the goal to adoption and Naomi, um, on the very first day, walked into my home and said, okay, you're my family now. You're my mom, you're my dad. These are my brothers and sisters. This is my home. Will you please adopt me? And we're not even allowed to talk about that when we don't know where the case is going. So I was never allowed to say, yes, I'd love to adopt you. Yes, I'll ad I can't, you can't say that. You can't make promises. You can't even, you can't talk about it. You can't, you're not allowed to even hint that that would be okay because you will undermine the reunification process if you do that and it's hard it's hard when she's old enough and that's all she wants so here we are we're going to court and i was thinking we were so close to being able to tell naomi that she was going to get what she wanted so i go to court and um i think we're gonna change the goal to adoption and start the termination of parental rights well there was a really big surprise that day we show up to court and bio mom that morning had gotten out of jail there was a clerical error in her documents everyone thought I was supposed to be being held and she wasn't supposed to be being held that's tragic, right? That's not supposed to happen. And I knew immediately that that meant the case was going to practically rewind. Bio mom was going to get visits immediately. Reunification was going to start all over again. There was no way that the, we were going to change to adoption. And even though logically, Legally, ethically, I knew all of this. My heart broke. My, I, I didn't know how to handle it. And we, I left the courthouse that day and I just cried all the way home. I remember it was raining. It felt like a funeral. 
And I remember calling the kids' as therapist because I didn't know what to do. I said, how do I tell them that? And, and I don't know what's going to happen with these kids. And, and I thought we were just months away from adopting them. And now we're back at square one and I don't know what's going to happen. And my heart knows that if mom can reunify that that's the number one goal and I have to push for that and I have to help her with that. And I have to, I have to do everything I can to make that happen, even though I already let my heart go in the other direction. And because that's the way the case was going. And so anyway, it's hard and you have to backtrack now. And I didn't know. I didn't know how to do that. But I had to, I had to figure it out. I had to do my job as a foster mom. So we got the kids into some emergency therapy sessions real quick so that they could talk about their feelings about what was going to happen and work out any issues that they might have and understand what this meant that they're going to be having visits with bio mom and they hadn't seen her in almost a year, so they needed to be prepared for that. Rafa had to see his therapist in a different city. So I took him down there and he saw her. And then the next day I was taking James and Naomi in to see their therapist. I go into the office with just James and Naomi. And there's someone behind the counter that doesn't know me and I don't know her. And I don't know where the regular lady is. Chantel, where did you go? You're not there. And I'm all emotional and I'm stressed out and I don't know what's happening in my life anymore. And okay, so the new lady, she's not new, she's just subbing for Chantel. And she doesn't know how to make the TV in the lobby work and she doesn't know how to get people to sign in. And all these people are standing around the lobby and everybody's there for their sessions and it's kind of chaotic. So she's trying, and she's the poor thing, you know, she's just trying to help make everything work. So one of, I think it was James's therapist is one of the owners or something, I don't know. And he comes down and he needs to help this poor girl get everything situated. So he does that, which means James had to wait a little bit to get his session started, which was fine. It's not a big deal. I mean, they squeezed us in for an emergency session, so I didn't mind waiting a few minutes. So eventually he gets the TV going and he gets the girl figuring out how to sign everybody in. And now everybody's up in their sessions. James started maybe 10 minutes late. And so I'm sitting in the lobby all alone. Everybody's now off at their spot and I'm just waiting now. And this sweet lady who was covering for Chantel comes out to me and she says, I feel so bad that I had to take your therapist away from your son and i just wanted to give you these and she hands me three cold stone gift cards and i cried she didn't see me cry she doesn't know she doesn't know nobody there really knows but i took it as a sign and i'm not one to really believe in signs either which you probably don't believe because i'm telling this story but it was so bizarre to me because I'm sure they had a lot of different kind of gift cards behind the counter that they could have given to people. And, you know, they had no idea that what that meant to me personally. Cold Stone is what we do when we adopt children. And right now, the adoption that I thought was going to happen was possibly slipping through my fingers. And she gave me just a little ray of hope. And so I slipped those Cold Stone gift cards into my wallet and I said, I will not use these Cold Stone gift cards unless we adopt these three kids. And it still took two more years. So eventually we did get to go to Cold Stone and use those three gift cards. So anyway, that's the story any of you guys want to look into fostering or adoption, just do it. You're not making any commitment. There's a lot of people who take the classes and then after the classes, just say, you know, I don't think this is for me. Um, and so we always encourage people, 
you know, just if you're thinking about it, take the classes. The classes are not a commitment. Start the licensing process. Move forward. If you're thinking about it, just make the phone call. Find your local foster care agency and do it. You won't regret it because you can always not finish the license if you decide it's not for you. But you can never finish the license if you never start it. Just do it. to watch all our other